Francis Baudry. I'm a professor at the University of Montreal. I am a professor at the veterinary school uh, at the University of Montreal. Uh, today, we will show you the different steps involved in the meat authenticity method uh, using uh, sample preparation as well as uh, mass spectrometry. So, Osama will make a demonstration of the initial steps. So, the first step will be to uh, weight the meat uh, using a balance. So, Osama will weight 20 gram of meat. This method can be either scale up or scale down, depending on the need. Uh, we can use two gram or we can use 200 gram, depending on the need. Now, we will weight uh, 20 gram of meat. Um, we can scale up or scale down uh, the amount we weight. Uh, we can use as little as two gram or scale up up to uh, 200 gram as long as we keep the ratio between uh, meat and the uh, homogeneous uh, liquid uh, constant, which is a ratio of one to five. And that will be the following step where we will homogenize uh, the meat uh, in water at a ratio of one to five. When it's weighed precisely, we can add the precise amount of water and adjust the volume according to the weight. The next step now, we'll uh, put the meat in the blender. We'll add 100 ml of water and we'll turn on the mixer for two minutes. So after two minutes blending, uh, the mixture will be transferred in a tube, in a centrifuge tube, so we could remove the debris from the mixture and use the supernatant to extract the protein. As you can see, the mixture is blended. There's still some uh, particles, but it's normal. So this is how it looks. So now we'll go on the next step where we will centrifuge this mixture. So now we'll take the mixture and centrifuge the mixture at 3000 G for five minutes. The debris will accumulate at the bottom and the side of the tube and we'll be able to use the supernatant and extract the protein. So now the centrifuging is finished. We'll take the sample out. We can see the debris on the side and at the bottom of the tube. Following the centrifugation, this is the sample we are getting. As you can see, the debris are concentrated at the side and the bottom of the tube. So at this point, we'll take 500 microliter of the supernatant and transfer it in a micro centrifuging vial. The supernatant contain proteins that we will extract using acetone. So 500 microliter of the supernatant were taken. So now we will add 500 microliter of acetone. So protein will precipitate. Acetone will also extract excessive fat that can be present in the mixture. So now the next step will be to uh, vortex the mixture to ensure uh, the uh, sample is completely homogeneous. And we can vortex the sample for 15 to 30 seconds or you can use a multi-vortexer when you can uh, put uh, multiple samples and vortex for no more than 30 seconds, it's not necessary. So when the sample is completely homogeneous, we can move to the following step where we will centrifuge the sample at 3000 G. So when the mixture is completely homogeneous, following the uh, vortexing, 
We will centrifuge the, the, the sample at uh, 3000 G for 10 minutes at room temperature. So the protein will be concentrated mainly at the bottom and the side of the tube and we will be able to remove the mixture of acetone and water. So following 10 minutes centrifugation at 3000 G, we will take out the sample and we will, we will observe the formation of a protein pellet and a liquid phase. So we can observe the protein at the bottom of the tube and on the side of the tube and we can clearly identify the liquid phase. So now what we will do is we will remove the aqueous phase that contain also acetone and keep the proteins. We'll remove them with pipettes. You could also remove the excess by evaporation using a nitrogen evaporator. It's not necessary, but if you'd like to remove the excess, you can use a nitrogen evaporator as well. So now we'll use, we'll add uh, ammonium bicarbonate and we'll dissolve the pellet in the buffer. The buffer is at 100 millimolar and the pH was adjusted to 8 or can be also at 8.5. So we vortex to dissolve the pellet. It will take quite a while, can take uh, over a minute of vortexing to completely dissolve the pellet. So now we have dissolved the pellet in our sample. We will denature the protein by heat. The eater is set at 90 degrees. Normally it's going to take between 5 to 10 minutes. You will see a change in the nature of the solution. It, you need to remove the sample before it's boiling. So now we're ready to digest the protein in the mixture. So we will add trypsine. We'll add 2 microgram of trypsine. So we'll add 10 microliter of a solution that has been already prepared, where we add 20 microgram of trypsine, dissolve in 100 microliter of uh, one millimolar HCl solution. So we're adding 10 microliter to the sample. As an option, we could add done also cysteine reduction and acetylation. For this type of analysis, we haven't seen a significant improvement in our results. So the best way we found and the simplified way was to simply perform the trypsin digestion directly. So we vortex the sample and now we're ready to move to the incubator. So now the sample is ready to be incubated for a period of 12 to 24 hours. I will put the sample in the incubator. So protein will digest for 12 to 24 hours. After 12 to 24 hour digestion, we stop the reaction by adding a 1% TFA solution at an equal volume. We then centrifuge the sample at 12,000 G for 10 minutes and allicate the supernatant into an HPLC vial. Two microliter of the sample are injected. Peptides are separated onto a C8 biobasic column using a 30 minute gradient. Triptic peptides that are eluting from the column are ionized using an electrospray source 
and then transported into the mass spectrometer. It, the precursor ion will be filtered with a quadrupole and then will be bring to the Arbitrap region for uh, high resolution analysis. Meat authenticity and speciation can be done with specific triptych peptides. Today we'll show you an example using myoglobin triptych peptides. There's a very specific area around 120 and 140 amino acids we can use. So let me show you some of the triptych peptide we have used to perform this. So the analysis can be done in full scan mode at high resolution at 140,000 or it can be done in targeted MSMS mode. Let me show you some of the results in targeted MSMS mode. So when you look at this screen, you will see five different analyses. The first one are reference myoglobin peptides that we do target. We can see very abundant signal in MSMS. The second chromatogram we are seeing there are extracted myo myoglobin peptides from core homogenates. The third one are the same mass transition used but extracted from a chromatogram generated with beef homogenates. So you can see there is absolutely no signal because there is no pork added to the beef. When we had 1% pork into the beef sample, as you can see, we can observe a signal, a very intense signal. And when we add 10%, the signal obviously is amplified by a factor of 10. So we can perform meat authenticity as well as looking for adulteration of product using this method. I hope this short presentation of the method has shown the method being capable of doing meat authenticity as well as detect adulterations. The instrument behind me, the Q-Exactive, helps tremendously to achieve this goal either in high resolution full scan MS or in targeted MSMS mode. Thank you for listening. Hopefully that was helpful.